morning, everybody. Morning, morning. Yeah, my name is uh, Sopo. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is uh, still Sopo. And uh, I don't know if you guys are enjoying the sun um, as I am. Oh, not really. But uh, I'm actually looking forward to this weekend. Uh, we're going to have some time to enjoy the sun. I see some of you have enjoyed it more than I have, so it's good. That's a good sign. Good sign. But welcome, everybody. Hey, um, don't get distracted because it's just the two, 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 two people up here. We're all good. God is bigger. God is bigger than all of us. But uh, yeah, I just want us just to just relax, chill, and have fun. I uh, just want to welcome everybody here that's new or first time. Hey, glad you uh, chose uh, to wake up this morning and come in this morning. Bless you, and we're really excited to see what God's going to say today. Hey? Amen. Mm, yeah. <clears throat> yes, Jesus. I'm getting a bit old, so I gotta wear my glasses. Also, I'll be saying, singing random words. Sorry. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's do it again. Yeah.
Jesus, when I'm with you. Say that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, good. Who's here to worship Jesus? All right. Come on. We're going to continue worshiping in a minute. Welcome if you are visiting us today. You're uh, very welcome here. We are a full on Jesus focused church. Come that on. means um, if you've come here to spectate, you came <laughs> to the wrong place church okay <laughs> this is a full participatory uh church this isn't the worship team you are the worship yeah. team Come and uh, we give him worship worship uh, has the meaning of worth in it and our worship is in proportion to the worth of christ that's and right. he is infinitely worthy that's right that's right yes. so yeah we've just been praying in the pre-service prayer and just uh the reminder that we are we're corporately worshiping god together so it's not just one-on-one -on -one, we're doing it together yeah so we're all in this together there's a unity in our church a unity that we get a hold of because we're worshiping god together yeah we love the father we're children we're the sons and daughters of the high king and we take that place and we worship Him, and we worship Him. He's a good, good God. There's an aspect of worship that God is recovering to yeah. the church, and Come that on. is worship's connection to warfare. Come on. It seems almost contradictory and oxymoron. Oxymoron. <laughs> Freudian slip. Uh, an oxymoron, a worship and warfare, but they go hand in hand, hand in hand, hand in hand. And um, they go hand in hand because through worship, we access the King. We actually access who He is. And as we access to he, who He is and He comes into vision, that we actually gain perspective 
over the battles, the mountains, the giants, the, the battles that are looming over our lives and in this land. And when you're in the heat of the battle, it can feel overwhelming. But from the perspective, the vantage point of the King of Kings, the throne of heaven that we access in worship, we get a different perspective on all of life's problems. And so this is, this is the goal today. This is the invitation, is to build Him a throne with your worship. Each of you has a part in this. Each of you through your response and participation and engagement with what's going on will pick up a, a piece of material, spiritually speaking, that we get to build a throne for the King of Kings in our midst. And I believe the degree to which we do that well is the degree to which we gain that vantage point of heaven. All right. And so the challenge is, will you do that this morning? Yeah? Will you do that? Because sometimes it requires mm -hmm. determination, especially when you're feeling overwhelmed or sad or, or hounded, that to actually uh, pick up your spirit of worship and actually build Him a throne can feel like the last thing you want to do. You want to be carried in this environment. But today, the invitation is to actually uh, build Him a throne. All right, we're going to do and that. And I just want to add too, like there's so much going on around us. Like we're not just singing songs. So the Spirit of God is here and we have Spirit inside of us. So be aware of God speaking to you. Be aware of God doing things across the room. Like open your eyes to what is happening in the room. Open your, your spirit to what God is saying because He's always at work. He's always saying something. There's always something that you can learn, you can receive, you can give away because He's always speaking. Yeah, that's the goal we believe in. So when you're worshipping, we're not just worshipping songs. We're with songs. We're actually worshipping God and He's communicating with us all the time. So right. um, partner so, with that today. So God, let our worship be in yes. proportion to Your holy, worth. Holy, Lord, as holy, we worship God. You Thank today, you, I pray for the spirit Thank of you, wisdom Lord. Jesus. and revelation yes, Lord, spirit of wisdom, in Father the knowledge God. of Christ We welcome released. You, Jesus. You're welcome. We welcome spirit, Holy Spirit. You're again. welcome in this place. The spirit of wisdom, yes, Lord, the spirit of wisdom. and revelation holy, holy, in the holy, knowledge holy, holy. of Jesus Christ be released holy amongst God. us today so that we, we can capture we can capture who you are and respond Lord, accordingly. Lord, I call up, of God, the fear I call up of God, every person the today of God, Father, to that throne of God. building place holy, in worship. Holy, holy, holy. And if you're, if you're worshiping with us online, don't spectate there. Don't just simply kind of sit there or do the dishes as we're worshiping. Um, participate with us. God is at work. And as you do, God will meet us. Come so, on. Father, we thank you yes, in Lord. advance for all that you're going to do today in our midst. Yes, Lord, amen. You need to come down the front, come down yeah, the front. Yeah, come down the front.
testimony of your goodness and we're so excited that today we can be we can be who you created us to be and Jesus we say you are good you're so good Thousand stories of 
me party crowns on you remember those paper crowns yeah you can get um, and I saw us wearing those and it's like asking the Lord what are you showing me why are you showing me this and we've been singing about a good good father and the key revelation that Jesus came to bring wasn't just of himself, wasn't actually primarily of himself. He came to reveal the Father to an orphaned world. And I feel like God was releasing during that song and wanting to release to, to you afresh, especially perhaps even if you are in, in kind of your twilight years, your latter years of life. The fact that you are still his child. You are still a child. You're still a child. You're still a child. And that you're his child. And he takes great delight, great delight in you. And that he wants you to recapture some of what it is to, to be that child of God. So often we want to talk about the mature child, the responsible child, the, the, the child that knows how to steward God's inheritance as an aspect of that. But there is also a piece of that revelation that He is Abba. He is Abba. Abba, Father. And that you are His. And that He will never let you go. He wants to restore to, to you, especially if the, the joy of salvation, the joy of, of life has dwindled. There is a, 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 an impartation in this moment of childlike childishness in a good sense, not in a bad sense. And I, I want you to do a prophetic act with me. We like prophetic acts in new life. I want you to receive from him your paper crown that he's got, the the party crown, and I want you to put it on. I want you to put it on. And, and do mine as well. Have a look in the spirit at what color your crown is, because that speaks of something. There's a word in that for each of you. Yeah, and if you don't know what it means, ask him, what does that color mean? What are you trying to communicate?
Nobody forced you to do, but you, it blows me away that you chose, you chose us. And we're so grateful that you are faithful, even when we're not faithful. You continue to pursue us. And this morning, our heart and our prayers that you continue to, yeah, show you through us in our normal day. 
because you're worthy. You're worthy and you're good. Merciful, just, kind, joy, and your love. Amen. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Thank you, Sopo, for leading us in worship today. Why don't you thank Sopo? Yeah. Sarah Lynn and uh, Tim are away on annual leave, and um, summer's just a great time just to kind of do different things uh, in and around kind of our services, and it's, it's great just to, to have an unplugged worship and uh, loved Sopo's leading there. That was great. Uh, absolutely great. Um, just want to go after one thing. I, I, I saw this in um, in worship, and I don't know if it's specifically this disease, but I'm going to actually just say this: Is there anyone with ALS here? ALS here? No. Or a disease like it, or a disease like it. So ALS, you remember the ice bucket challenge? Yep, um, that was for the ALS disease. So no one's got that disease or a, uh, a disorder like it. We just really want to kind of go after um, disease today. Uh, I, I believe that um, during worship, I really felt that we're singing about the, the, the cross of Calgary. And, and um, Jesus didn't just die for our sins, he died for our whole person. Um, your body is hugely important to Jesus. And he died to see wholeness in you, body, soul, and spirit. Um, and so I, I really believe the spirit of the Lord is here to heal this morning. And if you've got a, a disease like ALS, if you would just raise your hand, we want to pray with you. Um, or if you've got a neurological disease, that's what they are, um, ALS, neurological disease or an autoimmune disease uh, as well. Um, one of the most amazing miracles that Jody and I uh, saw God heal um, was someone that had an autoimmune disease. Oh, I, I'm putting Jody on the spot because I can't remember what it is. The emblem of it is a butterfly. Do you, what's that? Anyway, it will come to me. Anyway. Lupus, that's right. They had uh, lupus for many, many years. And um, we were just picking the kids up from a Christian school that they were at and sitting opposite this lady. And I just had this picture flash across my mind. And I was like, I didn't think that uh, thought, which is often how God speaks to us. He jumps into our thoughts. And the picture I saw was of a butterfly flying off from this lady. I didn't know what it meant. I said, look, I think God may be speaking to me. Uh, I saw a butterfly lifting off you any idea what that could be and she said I have lupus and the national emblem for lupus is a butterfly um, and so we said well this this could be the Lord I what if he wants to heal you would be open to receiving healing and she said she said sure thing so we prayed for the lady I think her name was autumn or August August um, and we prayed for her and we simply our prayer was uh, shoe butterfly in the name of Jesus. That was it, shoe. Like kind of uh, prayed what we saw uh, and spoke out what we saw. And anyway, that was it. We asked, how are you feeling? There was no difference. Um, we heard back from her a few weeks later. She was completely feeling well. And um, she said, look, I'm going to check this out with the doctor. And the doctor said, wow, there is an amazing change in your body. Uh, and she, after uh, a number of months and then a year later, she was fully signed off from being healed from lupus. Yes, it's autoimmune incurable disease. Um, so the presence of the Lord is here to heal diseases. One of Jesus' specialties was disease. Uh, it says in the Gospels that there were many sick people amongst the multitude and he healed all of their diseases. So 
how many, like I'm, I'm guessing in a crowd like this, that there will be people that are fighting things like this. Um, so does anyone kind of identify with that? We want to pray with you. Okay. So one, two, three, yep, numbers of you, okay. And this can be awkward, especially if you're like, I don't wanna explain what it is. He knows what it is, and the presence of the Lord is here. Again, one of the ways that Jesus heals is through his body. Um, And if you're feeling courageous enough, if you could just stand for a moment, we wanna just send uh, our body around you to release healing. You don't need to go into detail of what this is or even how long you've had this. We just want the body to release um, healing over you. So if you would be courageous enough just to stand, if that you're identifying with that. And if you could look around the um, auditorium church folk, new life folk, find someone that's standing and go and stand beside them. And this is where it gets complicated um, because now we've got lots of people standing. If, all righty, there's someone down the front here. Joyce, do you want to head down there, Patrick? And at the back, Wayne, were you? No, no, no. Okay. So I need you to follow instructions, church. Um, and just ask if one of you can lay hands, on, put a hand on the shoulder of the person. We don't want um, a gazillion people doing that. That would be really weird and awkward. So just say, can I rest a hand on your shoulder? And no praying yet, okay? We're just kind of warming up. Introduce yourself, say hi, what's your name, if you don't know. All right. Okay. So church folk, we've coached you before in this. So often when we when we go to release healing on someone, we ask God what he's told us to do. So Jesus sent his disciples out and he said, heal the sick. Okay, he didn't say ask, go to someone, find them, and then ask my father to heal them. He said, you heal them. And what he meant was that when, when you step out to release healing on someone, my father will back you up, all right? And so what that looks like in prayer is um, to uh, speak to the disease and shoot away, like you, there's no formula about it, but it's just I release healing be healed. Yeah, release the solution. Don't describe the problem. Okay. So describing the problem sounds like um, uh, describing the disease in front of you, uh, but release the solution. Okay. And uh, so you can all do that at once. I'm going to get you to do it for 10 seconds only uh, because God doesn't need a lot of time to heal. Um, But ready, steady, go. So release the solution. So we do, God, we we partner with what you're doing, what the Father is doing in the room, and we release healing. We release healing to each of these people. We release healing to you now, and we just say, be healed. It doesn't matter how long you've had this, how many prayers you've had before. Today is the day of salvation. Today. So we release healing now into bodies. Restore bodies. Holy in Jesus' name. Be made whole. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. Now some of you won't be able to tell immediately. Some of you, uh, when you were being prayed for, you felt uh, the peace of God or sometimes heat, sometimes electricity. If, If that was you, they're good indicators. It doesn't require that every time to be healed, but they often accompany that. All right. Good. Jody. It's so simple how God works, right? It's really awesome. So thanks, Maddie.